Hello there, fellow English enthusiasts. Welcome to today's lesson, where we're going to dive deep into a question that many students ask: How can you truly master the skill of thinking in English? You've probably heard that phrase a lot: "Think in English." Think in English. And teachers like me often emphasize its importance, but what does it really mean? And how can you, as a student, make it a practical part of your language learning journey? Is it something that just happens naturally and spontaneously? Or if it's not, can you follow specific steps to make it work for you? Well, that's exactly what we'll be exploring in this video. If you've ever wondered how to effectively switch your thoughts to English, then you're in the right place. Stick with me until the end of this video because I'm about to walk you through one of the seven methods to master thinking in English. I designed this series of videos to alter the way you interact with English or any language that you're learning. This is especially for those of you who feel you've learned so much vocabulary words over the years, but are still unable to use it in actual conversation or speech. For our video today, we're focusing on a crucial aspect of language learning: thinking in English and speaking our thoughts aloud. Yes, aloud. This practice is like giving your thoughts a voice in the English language and stopping your brain from translating from your native language to English. When you speak, your speech might be slower and unnatural, and that's because again, your mind keeps translating. The exercise that we'll do today is a helpful method to boost your fluency. And build up your confidence, especially if you don't have many chances to practice English or your self-teaching. Today, we're going to explore two example activities that will set you on the right track. I will describe the detail what's going on in my mind, and then say to you some example words and sentences. These mental exercises to help you out to understand thinking. Will be valuable for you to think in English. Before we jump in, make sure you have a pen and paper ready, or even better, you can download or save this video along with the rest of the videos in this series. Don't forget to share these lessons with other learners who might find them helpful and valuable. Ready to get started? Let's dive in. First, we're diving into a practice that's both fun and incredibly helpful. Thinking aloud while describing your surroundings. Now, don't worry. This isn't about narrating every single thing around you. It's actually about letting your thoughts flow freely and naturally in English. And for our example, we're going to explore a bustling fast food restaurant. But wait. You don't actually need to be physically in a restaurant for this exercise. You can actually just use your imagination to vividly recreate, let's say, a recent visit to a fast food joint. If you have a picture like this, it can work wonders too. Simply let your imagination bring it to life. All right. So let's break down how to do this. Step one. Observe your surroundings. Take a moment to look around and observe your surroundings. Notice the details of the restaurant. Think of words such as decor, seating arrangements, counter, menu boards, the smell in the air, what the employees are wearing, or the sound coming from the kitchen. And any other interesting features. Step two: Start narrating. Begin to describe what you see aloud. Start with simple sentences. For example, you can say, "I'm in a fast food restaurant. There are bright lights hanging from the ceiling, and the walls are painted red." 
there's a big soda dispenser with different drink options. The tables are neatly arranged with chairs for customers. Step three, include specific details. As you continue, add more specific details. Mention things like the types of food being served, the people in the restaurant, and any distinctive features. For instance, I see a menu board with burgers, fries, and drinks. Some families are sitting at the table, and there's a play area for kids. Over there, a group of friends is sharing a large order of fries. I see a family sitting by the window, enjoying their meals together. Step four, use adjectives. Incorporate adjectives to make your description more vivid. Say things like, the aroma of freshly cooked fries fills the air. The tables are clean and shiny, and the staff behind the counter is busy taking orders. The walls are adorned with pictures of signature dishes, making it quite appealing. The lighting is so soft and warm, creating a cozy atmosphere. Step five, share your feelings. Express how you feel about the environment. For example, it feels cozy and welcoming here. The hustle and bustle of people chatting and enjoying their meals create a lively atmosphere. The fast paced buzz of people chatting and orders being called out adds to the lively vibe. I feel a sense of familiarity and comfort in this place, like a little escape from the outside world. Step six, add some interaction. Imagine interacting with your surroundings. Pretend you're ordering or picking up your food. Say, I think I'll go over to the counter and order a cheeseburger and a soda. Oh, they have a self-service station for condiments. As I step closer to the counter, I notice the vibrant menu options and feel a bit torn between trying something new and sticking to my usual order. I walk over to the condiment station and grab some ketchup packets to go with my fries. Step seven, be playful. Don't hesitate to be playful with your thoughts. Share a random observation or a thought that crosses your mind. For instance, I just noticed the quirky wall art. It's all about burgers and fries. That's kind of fun. Looking at the giant burger poster, my stomach playfully nudges me. Maybe today's the day for a burger splurge. I chuckle to myself as I see the paper straws and think, saving the planet one sip at a time. Step eight, keep going. Continue describing your surroundings for a few minutes. You can add more details, share more thoughts, and even speculate about what other people might be ordering or talking about. Now let's go to activity two, plan your day. As you're getting ready in the morning or going about your daily routine, talk through the plans for the day in English. This activity helps you organize your thoughts in English, use future tenses, and work on time-related vocabulary. Step one, begin with a greeting. Start by saying, good morning, or hello to yourself. This sets the tone for your day planning. Step two, mention the day and date, the day of the week and the date. For example, it's Saturday and today is the 15th of July. Step three, express your intention. Share what you think about doing today. Say something like, I'm thinking of planning my day and making the most of this weekend. I'm excited to plan a productive and enjoyable day ahead. Let's make the most of it. Step four, list key tasks. Start listing the tasks or activities you want to accomplish while thinking aloud in English. For example, I'll have a leisurely breakfast, then I need to do some grocery shopping for the week. I need to finish that report for work. 
call the plumber about the leak and pick up the groceries for the week. Step five, prioritize. Mention out loud which tasks are more important or time sensitive. After the groceries, I'll hit the gym. I really want to get my workout done early. All right, the report is due tomorrow, so that's my top priority. I'll tackle the plumbing issue afterward and then head to the store. Step six, time management. Think about how you'll manage your time throughout the day. Say something like, I'll probably spend about an hour at the gym and then I'll come back home to prepare lunch. I estimate the report will take about three hours. The call might take 15 minutes and the grocery run could be an hour. I'll allocate time accordingly. Step seven, include leisure activities. Share your plans for relaxation or leisure activities. Like, in the afternoon, I'm planning to read that new book I got. Maybe I'll also catch up on a movie that I've been wanting to watch. After work and chores, I'll definitely unwind with a good book for an hour and maybe take a short walk around the park. Step eight, social plans. If you have any social plans, talk about them. Like later in the evening, I'm meeting up with friends for dinner. It's been a while since we all got together. My friend just texted about coffee catch up. I'll suggest meeting in the evening after everything's settled. Step nine, flexibility. Acknowledge that plans can change. So say to yourself something like, of course, things might change a bit. You never know what the day might bring. Things might change, so I'll keep a little buffer time. If the call takes longer or I want to relax a bit more, I'll adjust. Step 10, wrapping up. Summarize your day and express your excitement. Say something like, so that's my plan for the day. A mix of productive tasks and some relaxing moments. I'm looking forward to it. Step 11, sign off. End with a positive note saying something like, let's make it a great day. Sounds like a plan. I've got my day mapped out and I'm ready to make this happen. Let's do this. Remember, the goal is to practice speaking and thinking in English. So don't worry about being too formal. The more you practice like this, the more comfortable you'll become with expressing your thoughts and plans in English. So there you have it. First method to think out loud in English. Commit to today's technique and watch your English thinking develop. Language learning is a journey and today is just one of your passports to thinking in English. But are you ready to try out this challenge? Tell us in the comments below and share your thoughts about this. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more engaging lessons, and I'll see you next time for another step toward mastering English. Happy thinking and happy learning.